everyone. Welcome to, to the webinar on how to engage your remote audience. Uh, we still have three minutes until we start, but uh, while we're waiting for other participants to join in, I actually would love to uh, ask you a question because it's all about the engagement today. So of course, I would love to engage with you as much as possible today. And uh, I have tried to promote you to be panelists. So I hope uh, you will be able to actually speak and turn on the cameras as well, if you'd like. If not, don't worry. Uh, but I would also like to encourage you to participate uh, in our poll today, because I will be uh, using Slido a lot throughout my talk today. So while we're waiting for other participants to join in, uh, I actually would like to ask you to grab your smartphone if you have a smartphone anywhere nearby and uh, basically either scan the QR code that you see in the upper left corner or simply enter the event code interaction when you go to slido.com and then you should end up seeing this question where are you joining us from today and uh, simply yes simply select one of the one of the options and for some reason it's not yet working but let's reload and hopefully it will work this time yes it's working perfect so uh, i repeat the instructions while we're waiting for other participants to join in uh, i would love to interact with you in a series of poll questions throughout the entire webinar so please uh, feel free to grab your smartphone or just simply open another browser and go to slide.com enter the event code interaction or simply scan the QR code on the left side. And the question is, where are you joining us from today? So most of us are actually working from home. If you have a home office or like a room dedicated to actually work, uh, that seems to be the case for some of you already. Uh, if you haven't, please let us know where you are working from today. So I'm working from actually from our uh, dining room, I would call it. Uh, but I happened to be at our office yesterday after a very long time. So that made me very happy to finally see people and uh, see building other than our house. Beautiful. The majority of you looks like it's working from the living room. I'll just quickly check whether we have already got, whether we've got, uh, more people already joining us so i can promote them to be panelists as well let's see All right, so very well, welcome again for those of you who just joined in. Uh, please, uh, before we start, I would love to invite you to go to slido.com. You don't need to, if you have a smartphone, it's great. You can use your smartphone to go to slido.com and enter the event code interaction, or simply go to uh, open another browser uh, on your laptop and simply go to slido.com and enter the event code interaction. You'll be able to see a question asking you about where you're joining us from today. It's an important piece of information in these remote times. So just to clarify that we're all working from home and that the topic of remote engagement is indeed very important. All right, it's 11.31. Uh, so I guess we can actually start. So very warm welcome again, uh, everyone who joined us today. Uh, before I uh, talk about uh, my tips on how to engage a remote audience, I would like to share one statistic with you. Uh, did you know that on average we pick up our phone 58 times a day? Now, what does that really mean? That means we get really easily distracted. Uh, we get distracted easily even in in-person meetings, but that is even more so if we are part of remote or online meetings. 
So really the, the topic of today's talk is super important and I'm going to talk to you today about how you can engage uh, your audience at remote meetings and virtual events. My name is Christina Kumar and I am from Slido and I'm in charge of education and outreach. Uh, now, for those of you who have maybe uh, done, uh, cannot really picture what I'm actually doing, so I actually run uh, weekly webinars uh, at Slido with various topics. We started a new series of webinars yesterday uh, where we uh, talked about virtual team buildings. So this is a topic that is also super interesting to many uh, people in companies and organizations because as they have switched to the remote functioning, they suddenly didn't know what to do with their teams in a remote setup. So that was a really beautiful webinar yesterday where we had lots of people in and uh, I advise you if you ever have time, please join us as well. Uh, very briefly to the agenda, it's very simple for today. Uh, basically, in the first part, I will share with you a few tips on how to engage your remote audience. And in the second part, I would love to answer the questions from you. Now, there are two options how you can ask your questions. Either simply uh, start to speak, you have all been promoted to panelists, so you can actually uh, turn on the camera, you can speak as well if you unmute yourself. Uh, so feel free to do that. Uh, the second option, of course, is you can actually ask questions via Slido, as I've already mentioned. Uh, so either going to a browser or uh, using your smartphone and opening a browser there, going to slido.com and entering the event code interaction or simply scanning the QR code. You can ask the questions there throughout the entire talk and I will get to them at the end of the talk. So we'll be able to, to talk about them uh, in a specific time. Now, before I start, uh, three more questions I have for you, just to know we, who, who we actually have online. I would love to find out if you've already running all remote meetings or virtual events, what is your current situation, how experienced you are with the remote meetings. So please feel free to, to answer this question. Um, if you are new to them, that's great. Uh, if you're running hybrid meetings, so you have uh, an experience with running hybrid meetings, which means that some people are joining in person and some people are joining remotely. This is how we function actually before Corona at Slido as well. So all of our meetings were hybrid uh, because uh, of course we have a distributed teams all over the world, but uh, the majority of the events were actually hosted from the HQ. But Corona has changed everything and now we are a fully remote company and we are proud to be running these remote meetings. All right, so most of you is new to the uh, remote meetings. So you are in a good uh, webinar today. And the second question I have is what size are the meetings or events you are running? Now this is also an important uh, piece of information because of course uh, it depends on how you design your meeting or event. If you're running large scale meetings for a hundred or more people, there are certain things that you need to think about uh, when it comes to, to your audience. But I see that the majority of us here is running a smaller scale meetings, or actually up to 50 people, so not, not that small, right? Perfect, and the last question I have for you is, what if you had to identify a struggle that you currently experience when you're running a remote meeting what would it be you can actually select more than one option in this one so um feel free to do that and uh, i'm sure you have come across all these issues but the question is what would you identify as your biggest one or a couple of ones Right, you can keep on gates. Yes, the, the topic of today, handling the AV setup, of course. Uh, it's, it's all about technology. Perfect. And the majority of us uh, would say that engagement is really the biggest struggle that they're currently facing. So great that you're here today and let's jump right into it. So how can we actually engage people in remote meetings? Of course, the first thing we need to we need to realize is that we need to prepare very well. Now, this is not rocket science, but of course, even for the in-person meetings, people spend on average five hours, three minutes in the in-person meetings, and they spend almost as much time a week 
preparing for them. Now for the online meetings, uh, I would even argue that the amount of time that you spend preparing for them might be actually even higher. Uh, of course, uh, as I said, preparation really is the key. And uh, as I said, this is not really rocket science, this slide, but it's super important because of course the technology is bread and butter of every online meeting. So really what you really, really need to make sure is that you rehearse the technology very well. You need to test the camera audio, the Wi-Fi. You really need to log into that meeting at least 15, 20 minutes earlier to make sure that you actually have everything uh, running. And uh, of course, the point of screen sharing is very important as well. So you need to decide about who's going to share the screen and who's going to control the slides. Uh, once you uh, explore the remote or online uh, conference, video conference world, uh, you'll find out that there are so many things you can actually do uh, that you perhaps didn't know of. So it's really worth, I really recommend to you that you spend about a few minutes or at least half an hour actually exploring that tool that you are using because you'll really be surprised how many great features there are and what you can do with it to make your meeting even better. As I've already said, uh, dial in at least 10 minutes. I would say 10 minutes is actually not even enough. The, you can really, if you need to test or if you are using more than just one tool, to run your meeting and really at least 15, 20, 25 minutes is really, is really the top. I was uh, facilitating a conference last week and uh, we actually logged in 45 minutes before the start and we found out that the entire tech setup was not working. So even 45 minutes was not enough to actually uh, run through the tech check. Uh, as I said, it's super important that you not just uh, agree on who is going to share the screen, but you can actually decide on who is going to move through the slides. So if you have more than one speaker, for example, you have three presenters from three various locations, actually all three of them can, uh, can control one presentation. You just need to give them the remote control. And then it's really uh, very smooth for, for the entire presentation if they are controlling their own slides by themselves. And of course, uh, recording a meeting nowadays is uh, something very crucial because if you have people joining from various uh, continents, of course, they cannot join at uh, some point at night. So it's, of course, great to always record the meeting. And if technology or your Wi-Fi actually fails you, then you always need to have that mobile hotspot ready. I also learned my lesson um, sadly because of unworking Wi-Fi and you really it's all about it's just really a matter of seconds so if you have it already uh, prepared the mobile hotspot it will save your entire event and uh, of course so you join in earlier to test everything but you also uh, try to invite uh, your participants to join in a bit earlier so you can actually then start on time we've had a guest speaker uh, from the US, Nathan Gold, who actually never starts his webinars or events, online events, uh, at, for example, 4 p.m. So he doesn't start at a sharp hour because he believes that people actually should only end the meetings at 4. So he actually always sets the start at 10 minutes past an hour. And that way he gives those people 10 minutes to actually join in, find out how to even join in and so on. So it's actually quite a nice tip how you can start your events and meetings at an unusual time, 10 minutes past an hour. What is super important in uh, remote meetings is that you get ready for those awkward silences. There will be those awkward silences and it took me a while as well to, to get used to them because it's just basically you or a few other presenters speaking and people will not have the courage perhaps to speak up. But this is the important thing to realize that they might simply be afraid to speak up and you need to give them some room and allow them to, to speak. If they are shy, you can use tools such as Slido, which is, uh, we are going to use today as well. So if, um, if they are shy, they can basically submit their question in the written form and they don't even need to uh, write down their name if they are not uh, fully okay with the fact that their name will, be, will appear on the, on the screen. Right, so we've looked at a few tips uh, when it comes to the preparation stage, but let's now uh, jump right into the main part, and that is the event itself or the meeting itself. 
And so it's important to realize and that you've realized it as a presenter or event organizer that the remote presenting is very different to in-person presenting. And it literally, it actually feels like you are speaking to a brick wall, just like in this picture, because you are just talking, there are no reactions, you cannot see anyone, uh, you cannot see anyone's feedback, and it's just super hard to, to get to uh, find out what is the real feeling in the virtual room and how you are doing with your talk. So that's why it's super important that you engage people from the very, very beginning of your session. For example, today I asked you the question, where are you joining us from, which uh, part of your house? Uh, and that was just a very kind of easy, light question to, to kick off. But uh, trust me, if you are running an event for 50 people, it makes such a difference because not only it really takes the pressure of the entire meeting, uh, but also it really sets the expectation for them, for the participants, that they are in the meeting to actively participate and you expect that uh, participation from them from the very start. If you didn't engage with them from the very beginning, you would really just uh, uh, basically let them know it's okay for them to just passively observe and listen to you and perhaps not even listen to you. So that way you really give them that kind of incentive. Okay, guys, I want you to listen and I want you to engage with me throughout. And there are a few ways how you can do that. Uh, I ask you a question uh, about uh, where you're joining us from, but of course you can uh, you can uh, use any kind of other question. And the best thing that works actually is to use humor for your you use humor for your first uh, kickoff icebreaker poll, so that people really get attention off and they are put into that mode that they want to share with the with the rest. Uh, there are a few other activities you can actually do to to kick off your meeting in an interactive way. You can encourage them to turn on the cameras and actually show them uh, show you uh, their workspace. This is something we did uh, at our internal meeting that really again it cheers people up. You can see everyone smiling and it just makes such a difference that people are already lured into that meeting. Uh, if you're running a team meeting and uh, you perhaps uh, are not used to being remote, it's always great to double check how people are actually doing in this remote setup. So uh, this is our marketing team, and we were asked basically to uh, describe our week in, in one word, using one word, and you can tell not just from the word cloud, but also from the faces that perhaps it wasn't the happiest week for us because we had a lot of work to do. So uh, this is just another great way how to, how to start the meeting, but also double check uh, how my team is doing. Uh, if you are running, for example, online events, external events, uh, you can actually let your audience shape the agenda. For example, this is a question that we've been asking in our webinars, the same question I asked you at the start. The only difference is that we actually limited the number of answers to three. So people had to pick up to three struggles, and then we decided according to those top three struggles that people voted on what we are going to talk about. So we didn't actually pay attention to the remaining um, struggles, but only to those top three ones. And this is really a nice way how you really give, give the control to your, to your audience and you let them decide what they want to hear about the most. Um, of course, it's great to let your audience know that you will be using those polls, uh, be it through Fido, through any other engagement tool, or basically just through non, uh, not even using a tool, just uh, hands and cameras. But it's important that you explain the why behind. It's not because you just want to insert, insert some kind of piece of fun activity, but it's really because you are interested in their opinions and you actually want to hear about them and you want to hear from them and collect insights from them because it's all about the participants and not about you presenting. Uh, it's also great to let them know they will be able to submit questions so they don't need to wait until the very end. Normally people will actually usually forget that uh, what they wanted to ask uh, the presenters. It's great to remind them that they can do that throughout the entire time. Uh, I'm not sure how many uh, remote meetings or online meetings you have already attended but uh, it can get super awkward if you want to clap or you want to celebrate something and uh, everyone is muted 
and no one can actually hear you or see you clapping. So it's really great that at the start of the meeting, you actually agree on a gesture that you use with your camera to, to replace that clapping. So be it a thumbs up or a basic smile, or I think at our last All Hands meeting, we had a heart shape as a, as a symbol to celebrate. So it's really up to you, depends on your company culture, it depends on, um, on basically the environment you come from. And also to avoid any kind of misunderstandings or people trying to speak at the same time, which really happens a lot uh, during remote meetings. It's great that you agree on, if someone wants to speak, basically just raise your hand into the camera. It's very simple, yet it's very effective and it will avoid the confusion. And a few focus hacks for your online audience. I really recommend you that you encourage them to turn their cameras on. Now, why? Uh, the reason is actually it's been proven that 82% of users are less likely to multitask if they have the camera on. So of course, I'm not going to cook if I have my camera on, I'm not going to do any other activities and it's really guaranteeing that I'm, I have my full focus on the presenter and on what's going on in, in that online meeting. The second tip might uh, look strange to you at first, and we actually encourage other people when they're listening to us uh, or watching us to try to grab a piece of paper, a pencil or pen, and basically draw something or color in or doodle. It's uh, something that really enhances your brain activity, and it's really helping you to focus. So it may sound silly at first, but uh, trust me, if you try it, if you attend uh, other online talks, try to do it at least once and see that, uh, see for yourself that actually your focus has probably increased if you are drawing something for yourself. And of course, it's always great to take your own notes. Notice just at Cooler University, it's great to continue doing that for the rest of your professional life because uh, you will only increase your own learning if you take your own notes. And now the question is over to you. If you are already doing any of these things I have been mentioning up to now. I still have a few more tips prepared for you, but I would love to find out if you're already doing any of these things. It's the same uh, Slido event, uh, the event called Interaction. So I would really love to find out if you are practicing some of them already. Perfect. Some of them you're already doing great. You're inspired to try. And some of you are doing all of them great. And no one actually selects it. No one I don't intend to. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I always feel very um, uh, anxious about that choice, but I still leave it in there. Uh, great. And now let's, uh, so we've already kicked off the event. We talked about a few things that you can do with your participants at the start. And what can we do if we actually then go into the presenting, the main content? And here, I would love to find out how many presenters you normally have at your remote meetings or events. Perhaps you think it's not such an important information, but actually, trust me, it's, it's related to what I'm going to talk about. All right. Mm -hmm. So two to three, that's great. Uh, someone picked just one and uh, yes that's, that's also good but we actually recommend always having more than one speaker because it always creates uh, some kind of changing dynamic and you then always have uh, you create this natural kind of conversation with someone that you cannot create uh, if you are just you as yourself presenting by yourself like me today I feel very lonely actually because I normally run uh, my webinars uh, in a tandem uh, with a colleague of mine or with a special guest. So uh, it's really, it makes such a difference if you have someone else on the, on the call. But uh, what I wanted actually here to, to really highlight is that you should really switch in your, in your uh, head uh, the way you present normally. You shouldn't just share the content. Uh, literally, you should think of some ways of how to deliver the content in a very different way because you are no longer presenting in person, but you're presenting online. And um, how, what I mean by that, for example, if you're introducing speakers or other presenters in your online meeting, 
you can engage uh, your audience into that and already let them think about your speaker and uh, let them think about what he's like, uh, what he likes doing and so on. What is his background? So one uh, example we are using quite a lot is actually uh, two truths and one lie about the presenter. So that way uh, you really bring in a little bit of fun, but also some serious pieces of information about the speaker and uh, the audience can really join in and already uh, engage with the speaker. Another way how you can a uh, little bit freshen up your uh, content delivery uh, is you can, of course, ask them a question about uh, the content that the presenter is going to present. So you really make them think about the topic and uh, just ask about their opinion first before you are going to tell them something. And perhaps you can even ask the same question twice. You can ask the same question at the beginning before you give the talk. And then you can ask the question at the end of your talk and to see how the opinions have shifted based on what you have been talking or what you have been saying to them. This is also a nice way how to actually uh, rate your uh, entire presentation. Um, of course, you can use a poll to, to check their knowledge and understanding. If you are presenting some heavy content, it's always great to do those kind of checks every few minutes. So you really know that people are following you and the content is not too heavy and it is clear what you have been, what you have been saying to your audience. If you're using Slido, uh, it's the uh, tip for you here. You can actually see the uh, count, the uh, count of people that have voted in the, the upper right corner. So that way oh, you can always know how much time you still need to give people in order uh, for them to vote. So this is just a small tip. And of course you can use any other tool or you don't need to use any online tool. You can, as I've already said, you can just use your cameras and uh, use the right to vote with, with your hands and do it the old school way that works as well if you have a smaller meeting so uh, now my question is if you actually enjoy playing quiz games uh, i personally i love playing quiz games it's uh, one of my favorite activities to do and uh, we also run virtual pop quizzes every two weeks and this is something uh, really a topic close to my heart because i'm very competitive and uh, even creating a quiz is also a lot of fun for me so, so it looks like you do enjoy playing quiz games and so actually uh, is the truth for a majority of the people out there in the world if you ask them the same question. So uh, here is a tip for you. Why not to use that uh, kind of fun part to deliver very serious content on, and to talk about serious numbers, OKR, statistics, updates. Why not to use that kind of fun format to deliver the serious stuff? It's a really a great way how you can engage that pe those people in your meeting. And uh, trust me, uh, you will really bring out that competitive side in them. And uh, you can use any kind of content, uh, basically just transform it, uh, transform it into, into a quiz and it will work uh, magic, I promise you. And uh, once you do decide to actually make it competitive and talk about winners and make sure you prepare a prize because then there is always a big letdown if there is no prize prepared for the winner of the quiz. Uh, now I've talked about the basically the shaping of the content, but uh, it's also important to think about the, the body language, which is also crucial when you deliver content in person. But you shouldn't forget about that when you're in the online setup as well. Uh, according to a recent study, there has been a, shown a direct correlation between the number of views of a TED talk and the number of speakers' hand gestures. So basically, the more you move with your hands, the more attractive you are to your audience. And imagine you are, just like me today, running in a very small window here. So everything you can see from a person is just a head and a bit of a body. So really, what you do with your hands is so important. And you can really do magic with it as well, because it can emphasize your content. It can emphasize the most important pieces uh, of, your, uh, of your presentation. So make sure you actually work with your hands. Uh, make sure not to overdo it like these two ladies. And the second important uh, aspect is that the tone of your voice. You actually, uh, I really recommend it to you that before your online meeting, you actually practice your voice and you practice the tone of your voice. It's, 
if, if you don't even have the camera on, it's really all about the entire online meeting is all about your voice. So really make sure that you play with your voice, you play with your intonation. You don't want to talk very monotonously. So people get bored after two minutes already and really just put such an emphasis on your tone and your head gestures. A few interaction tips here. So from our very own experience, uh, we have learned that it's really important to bring some kind of change into your presentation every five to seven minutes. If we're talking about in-person live meetings, we normally recommend about 10 minutes, but the span or the attention span in human beings in the online meetings is even shorter. And that's why we really recommend that you bring this kind of change every five to seven minutes. Now, the way you bring in that change, it can be by either changing the speakers. This is why it's always great to have more than one speaker. So basically, every five, seven minutes, you would uh, change the speakers, and it would already break the dynamic nicely. So people are actually listening to you. Uh, you can insert a poll, uh, as I have already shown you a few examples of that. You can use a slider poll or any other tool, or basically a human poll with the hands up, anything that really asks for activity from the other side of, uh, of the screen, so from, the, from your audience. Uh, you can also integrate a Q&A round. So for example, if you have uh, three different, three big topics that you are presenting about, it's really great to split it into three different uh, Q&A rounds. So after the first topic is delivered, then you ask people to submit their questions and you can talk about the first topic. And this is how you actually split your content into big three pieces. And this is how you insert the engagement with the audience into each of those um, content pieces. You can, of course, if you want to split the people into different groups, you can add a breakout session. There's also a very nice activity how you can uh, engage with various groups. Or one of my favorites is actually you can engage uh, your people by uh, recommending them to do some physical stretch. It may sound odd as well, but this is, again, something that uh, People would probably roll their eyes first, but trust me, they will be grateful after you do the physical stretches because the endorphins will come in and uh, the, they will again be able to listen to you in a more focused uh, way once they have done a bit of uh, exercise or a bit of a physical stretch. When it comes to the meeting conclusion, uh, it's really important that you encourage your people to upvote the, the questions that they actually felt like they were the most relevant. Uh, today we have only a few participants, but imagine you're running an event for hundreds of people and you are left with a five minute slot at the end to address the questions. And you still have about 50 questions in the pool. So you really want to focus on the ones that have been democratically voted or upvoted by your audience. So you uh, really know that they have been uh, identified as relevant to the majority of, of your people. And it's really great to, to really uh, let them go through all the questions and let them upvote the most important ones. So then you can spend those five minutes in a very effective way answering the most burning questions. Uh, when we're speaking about the Q&A, uh, I've seen it many times that event planners and meeting organizers, they don't actually allow enough time to address those questions. So if you have a 45 minute talk, there would be a maybe two minute Q&A slot at the end. And this is not really great because this is really what the majority of your audience is most looking forward to. They want their questions to be answered. So really, if you have a 30, 35 minute meeting, then really spend those 10, at least 10, 15 minutes answering the questions because really this is the most burning thing that your audience wants to hear about and uh, you really should spend that time engaging with them in the questions. And of course, never forget to dedicate enough time to get feedback. Uh, some people ask for feedback after the meeting or after the session, or they send a separate email asking for the feedback. It's too late. People will never remember what was their immediate feeling from that meeting or session unless they are still in the meeting. So we really recommend that you ask for your feedback while still in the meeting or immediately after, but never leave it after, after a few hours or even a few days after because you will never get those uh, very relevant uh, points from your people. And once you collect that feedback, of course, never forget 
to implement it, your audience will be grateful to you and they will be able to see that you actually worked based on their feedback. And this is something that we try to do as well um, in our all of our internal meetings especially if we run the all company meetings such as all hands we have uh, one this afternoon i believe so this is also great to really think about the feedback and now speaking of feedback i would love to know uh, what is your stance and what is your experience with collecting feedback so do you usually collect it after a meeting event or do you rarely collect it or never for those of you who collect the feedback only rarely, I cannot stress enough how how feedback has helped us and is still helping us every day to really improve. Because without that feedback, you can uh, you can never know uh, what the audience thinks, right? And with tools like Slider, it's great that the feedback can be anonymous. So people actually can give you very honest opinion on how your talk went and uh, really it's uh, the anonymous feedback will never be the same as the feedback with the name on right uh, great thanks so much so yes great that the majority of you often collect feedback keep doing so uh, it's a great way how you get your uh, your improvement going and if i had to leave you with five things that you can implement straight away without any long preparation or in a, any further studying of some materials there are five things i would really love to leave you with uh, the first tip is really try to mix it up every five to seven minutes if you have the remote meeting a virtual event bring that change of dynamic every five to seven minutes really to wake up people to freshen up their their focus, uh, it really uh, does do the job. Uh, second tip I have for you, my favorite is try to insert that quiz to present updates. It doesn't have to be a long quiz. It could be maybe just three questions. Trust me, it will make such a difference into your meeting dynamic and into the way people are engaged with your content. So try to present uh, some serious numbers, serious updates using a quiz. Uh, the third tip I have for you, is you could run an AMA session, AMA meaning ask me anything. So basically a Q&A session on special topic. Now this is a great format for which you don't need to prepare any content. So what you actually just do is you ask your audience for questions in advance before that meeting. They will basically submit the questions and then once it comes to the meeting itself, you would already have collected a few questions and in that meeting itself people can still uh, ask questions and the entire meeting it can be about 45 60 minutes it will just be about answering the questions but it will still be so um it's a very popular format that we are using as Fido as well and it really is the best way how to solve many uh, problems and clarities and so on so for example when the corona hit uh, the world we had a corona crisis uh, AMA session with the leadership where basically all of our questions got answered and it was such a well spent uh, 50 minutes of our time that otherwise you would have perhaps spent uh, I don't know with how many hours of meetings just preparing the content but that way we basically address all of the questions straight away. Uh, the first tip I have for you is really do spend some time exploring your remote meeting tool. You never know what is in there and what you can use to impress your audience. And the fifth tip, uh, whatever you do and whatever you decide to uh, experiment with, make sure to keep it simple because, of course, the beauty is in the simplicity, right? So these are the five tips. Uh, and now I would like to invite you to, to ask you questions. You can either unmute yourself or please feel free to submit questions at slide.com, event code interaction. And I see that we already have one question from Marcel. Uh, thank you very much for that one. So what should you do if tech is letting you down and you can't do the meeting as planned? For example, no share screen or no camera. Would you still continue? This is a very nice question, Marshall. Thank you very much. Um, so I had that uh, experience last week, as I said, in the conference, because we didn't manage to get it uh, running in those 45 minutes before the event. And uh, actually, it was even worse in our case because the sound was not working. So we had 300 participants at the conference who could see us, who could see our screen, but they could not hear us. And we didn't know, that was that was the saddest part. 
So for 15 minutes, we were basically talking and the presenters were talking and there was no sound. So we still continued, but what we did actually, we uh, run the entire event from scratch once we found out the uh, sound wasn't working. So we basically rerun the entire 15 minutes so to make sure that the participants had a quality experience. But if you have no share screen, uh, I guess that's naturally not, I think the most important thing in the online meeting is the voice. So unless you have the voice, you have the main connection with the audience. So even if you have no camera running, it's still such, it's not such a biggie because you can still talk to your or audience, and you, you can still engage with them. So I would still uh, be, I would still run the meeting as planned. But yes, you should uh, prepare for all the scenarios uh, when you run your tech tech. Really think about A, B, C, D, and E scenario. If that and that and that is not working, because uh, really technology is, as I said, is the bread and butter of every online meeting. So yes, uh, do continue and just make sure that people can actually hear you. Because if they can hear you, then I would not continue <laughs> and perhaps reschedule, uh, reschedule the the entire uh, entire event. Right. So uh, there was just one question, but let me just quickly check if we actually have um, any more questions, perhaps in in the Zoom chat. Let's see. And now my technology is letting me down because I cannot click on anything. This is great. Yeah, but in this in these cases, just be human and don't don't pretend that everything is okay because uh, everyone everyone else on the call is human as well. So I'm sure they will be able to actually uh, understand you and uh, uh, really feel uh, feel for you. So yes, so my, I think my screen basically froze. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, simply just unmute yourself. I'll be very happy to answer them. But if you do not have any questions, I would be very, very grateful for your feedback. So uh, as I've already preached about the feedback, of course, I would love to get feedback from you as well. Uh, if uh, you have the spare 30 seconds, one minute, uh, I would really love to find out. In Slido, you can see a poll open with just two questions. Uh, I would really uh, appreciate uh, your your opinion on what I can improve for until the next time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I hope that uh, you we meet at a different talk next time. And uh, thanks again. If you leave us feedback as well, I'd be super grateful. Thank you very much and have a great rest of the day.